First of all, I want to thank everyone for being here. And I've got one question for this crowd. Are you ready to roll up your sleeves and work for the next four weeks to elect Barack Obama? I want to thank I want to thank soldiers in Sailors Hall for allowing us to be here today. Also, I want to thank Lauren Watts, the field organizer, and I know and I know that uh, Congressman Jason Allmeyer is here today. We thank him for being with us today. I have. I have a very simple task today. I'm here today for one purpose, and it's to endorse Barack Obama to be the next President of the United States. you to know that I agree with that. We know what this is about. We know what this campaign is about. This campaign is a chance for America, a chance for America to chart, to chart a new course, to go down a different path, a path, a path, first of all, of change, a path of a new kind of politics, a path and finally, a path of hope and healing. And I, I believe in my heart that there's one person who's uniquely qualified to lead us in that new direction, and that is Barack Obama. I want, I want everyone in this hall today to know something. I called Senator Clinton last night to tell her of my decision, and she was very gracious. And we know that she's a great senator, she's a great leader. And one thing we all agree on, all of us as Democrats across this Commonwealth and across this country, we agree on so much. And one thing we agree on is in 2008, we're going to elect a Democrat to the presidency of the United States. And I know, and I know that in the next four weeks, as we campaign in Pennsylvania, we need to do a lot of things. We need to work hard, and we need to listen to the voices we've heard today. We need to hear and listen to the voices of young people all across this country. So many of them here. Because Young people in this country, in this campaign, have sparked a renewed sense of hope and optimism. And you know what? You know what? Senator Obama knows that my wife, Teresa, and I have four daughters. And like me, he's in a household surrounded by smart, beautiful women. Let me. Let me tell you a little story about my four daughters, one by one. First of all, my daughter Caroline, our second, she saw Senator Obama speak at the 2004 convention. She was not only listening, <laughs> she was not only listening, by the end of his speech, she was standing on her chair. And she, that's the same reaction that we've all had about his campaign and as ab about his character. My daughter Elise. My daughter, Elise, was sitting in our home the night of the Iowa caucuses. Senator Obama was speaking, and she was transfixed at looking at the television set. 
and then all of a sudden, I was sitting, standing there in the kitchen with her, the telephone rang, her cell phone rang. One of her good friends called her, she picked up the phone, and she said, I can't talk to you now, I'm listening to Barack Obama, and she hung up. <laughs> so, and two more. Two more. My daughter Julia is reading The Audacity of Hope right now. <laughs> and my daughter Marina, who's our youngest, is 11. She's been giving me messages for Senator Obama that I'm supposed to impart to him later. <laughs> but really, this is about all of us, of all ages, across this state and across this country. And we know one thing. We know that we have to bring change to America in 2008. We're here. We're here today in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And if there's one thing that Pittsburgh knows, one thing that Pennsylvania knows, is we've got to do some pretty hard work when it comes to major issues. We've got to invest in our economy. And the best way to start that is to invest in our kids. Early learning, good health care, pre-kindergarten education. And we have, we have in this state and across the country a lot of people hurting. And we know from our history here in Pennsylvania and our heritage that it's not enough for elected officials like me to curse the darkness. We've got to roll up our sleeves and create good paying jobs now we have to, we've got to confront, we've got to confront the housing crisis that the other party won't do. We've got to do that as Democrats. We also have to invest in the skills of our workers, meet the challenges of energy and our environment. And finally, and finally, as we remember and fight hard against terrorists all over the world, we've got to remember something else. We've got to remember those who are serving for us in Iraq right now. After five long years and 4,000 deaths, just consider this in Pennsylvania, 183 of our sons and daughters, more than 1,200 wounded, some of them grievously, permanently, irreparably wounded. And what, what, what do we have to do? We have to respond, I think, as Democrats across this country have about the war in Iraq. We know something about what the new direction for America means. But the new direction for America has to begin with the question of the war in Iraq. And it starts with a strategy to, of redeploying our troops, beginning that process. It starts with insisting that the Iraqis do their part and take on the responsibility of ending the violence and bringing... And they have to take responsibility for their own government. We know that. But all these challenges and more demand that we respond as citizens, as elected officials. But you know what? We can, we can work very hard, but we can only do so much as, as individual Americans. We need a president who's committed to change, and we need a president who will lead us in that new direction. And he's right here with us today, Barack Obama. I just wanted to spend a couple of moments talking about the person, the man who is on this stage. Barack Obama, when you consider what his life has been, his life is a great American story. It really is when you think about it. It's a story, a story born of the diversity that is our strength. It's a story of struggle and sacrifice and triumph. And it's also a story about a, an abiding commitment to service in a story infused 
infused with the promise of America. That's what his story is all about. And you know what? That's our story, too, here in Pennsylvania. All of you in this audience who know something about his biography know about that life. His life has been a life of sacrifice and perseverance. He turned down a lot of very lucrative uh, legal options. He could have been making a lot of money all these years, but he didn't. He, he started out working in the shadows of the steel mills of Illinois as a community organizer. We know that. And his battle, his battle and his life's work to help people is our battle here in Pennsylvania. He started this campaign as an underdog, but he knows what it's like to be a fighter. And we... <laughs> it's a good line. <laughs> but we know something about that in Pennsylvania. We know that we've been underdogs, too. There are a lot of people out there that are struggling right now in this economy. So he understands that. And I have no doubt that as President of the United States, he will take on, as he always has, the tough and big special interests in Washington, and he will fight for us here in Pennsylvania. So, I've been impressed by so much watching this campaign. I've been impressed by his compassion, his strength, his ideas, and I think especially, especially under fire, he has appealed as Abraham really under fire in a tough campaign. He has appealed as Abraham Lincoln asked us to do many years ago to the better angels of our nature. And we appreciate that as he's campaigning. And I really believe that in a time of danger around the world and division here at home, Barack Obama can lead us, he can heal us, he can help us rebuild America. The good Lord has blessed a lot of us, and he blessed Barack Obama with very, with very important gifts. Some of those gifts. The gift, I think, one, one of those gifts that the Lord blessed him with was the gift of intellect and integrity. The gift of quiet strength and resolute faith. And we know something about how he's campaigned and how he will govern as, as President of the United States. Because he has the kind of judgment that is steady in the eye of the storm. And, and I believe he's the kind of leader that's ready to be commander in chief of the United States of America. Finally, let me say a word about some of the people in our state. These are people that I know that he will care about and fight for. The, the woman who is a working woman who's riding the 33 bus through North Philadelphia, a bus I used to ride on a long time ago when I lived in the inner city of Philadelphia. The, the young veteran, a very young veteran I met in Shemokin, Pennsylvania, who survived two IED blasts. He'll be concerned and fight for him as well. When you think about others in our state, the homeowner in Fayette County, Pennsylvania, who's facing foreclosure, the dairy farmer in Wayne County, Pennsylvania, and here at the University of Pittsburgh, the sophomore.
He'll care about that sophomore who's worried about her student loans and worried about her future. All these people, all these people deserve a president who will fight for them. And we know who that is, the next president of the United States, Barack Obama.